Hi everyone, welcome back. We're here in Pangio Techno Valley and I'm here with the VP of Go Cuba. This is Leland, thank you for joining us. Yes, Alex, it's good to be here. Uh, I'm very excited to hear what you have to say about your company. We got to talk a little bit before uh, we started. So without mm -hmm. further ado, mm -hmm. give us a little self-introduction about mm -hmm. you and mm -hmm. your company. We're looking at uh, basically trying to help with the Alzheimer's issue, Alzheimer's and other neurological uh, diseases that uh, is quite pervasive and especially here in Korea you know with so many people getting older right becoming in the elderly society sure sure yeah. absolutely it's an aging demographic here mm -hmm. so how does that work your product if you will is something related to AI technology I, I know yeah. so AI, yeah. tell us about your product and what do you produce? What, mm -hmm. What's your research? What do you sell? Yeah, yeah. So basically, I mean, you got to start from, uh, you know, uh, the, the problem, right? The problem is that we're not catching Alzheimer's and Parkinson's and a few other diseases early enough. Uh, so when people are actually di diagnosed as having Alzheimer's, um, you know, it's already kind of too late. You can't really do mm -hmm. much. Yeah. Uh, so what we need to do is we need to uh, get an early warning signal somehow. Okay, so that's the problem that's what we're trying to solve, right? And so we were thinking like, how are we gonna do this? Um, and is there something that our company can do to, to you know, approach this problem? It turns out that the movement of your eyes is very highly correlated with the health of your neurological system and specifically with uh, your, your memory and uh, the way that your brain's working. So um, that's basically a data point that we can, can use to detect uh, Alzheimer's and, and early forms of Alzheimer's uh, at an early enough stage to start treatment. Um, I personally have a little bit of, of a personal history with Alzheimer's because my grandfather died from it. So I, I kind of understand a little bit what the family, from the family side, what they go through, right? And one of the big issues with Alzheimer's is that um, even if the family knows that someone especially like their, their father or whatnot, has some kind of issue with their memory, they, they don't really um, want to accept it in many cases. So on my side, I, I'm looking at this and, and saying, hey, we're using hard data, you know, eye movement, uh, that can actually give us a signal. And that's what is needed to actually begin the process of getting into the, the, the full system and the, the support system and, and all of the diagnosis that needs to be done and all of the additional changes to lifestyle and all of this other stuff. It's, it's not easy to, to, to try to you know, treat Alzheimer's. There's a lot that has to be done and it's a huge effort. And so I think that you know, that's one of the reasons why most families don't want to uh, you know, accept that, that their, their father or you know, whoever has it, right? Because it means a complete change in their life and also, it kind of, it's, it's strange because once they actually accept it, you know, that, that their father or whatnot has, has Alzheimer's, then it, it's kind of like the acceptance makes it a much bigger problem, you know, in their heart and, and in the whole family. So yeah, we're getting hard data and um, that data has been available in the past, but it's been very difficult or expensive to get that data. And also it's been very difficult or expensive to use it as a diagnostic a tool. But these days, uh, because of the massive improvements in AI deep learning technology, as well as access to very low cost and good uh, eye tracking systems, uh, now we have enough data at a cheap enough price, and we have the, the algorithms and the software to actually uh, combine that together into making a signal. Yeah. And so this is a great way to kind of inform the family in advance, but then who else could receive this data or who else could benefit from knowing about it. Is this something that the government would want to know about for support systems? Yeah, oh, governments, uh, they really want this sort of data. Like if, if we can you know, tell the Korean government, hey, this person has a very high likelihood of, of having Alzheimer's in, in the near future, they really want to know about that as soon as possible because it's, not, it's for the person's health themselves and it's also for the well-being of their family. And also, as a society, Alzheimer's and other diseases like this, uh, like neurological diseases, it's, it's a very, very heavy burden uh, for the entire healthcare system. Because again, as I said, in most cases, you can't just you know, solve it. It's not like you go have surgery and you're good. It's like the rest of your life, you're gonna be getting you know, help. And, and, and it's really, really expensive. It's a very heavy burden. So if we can tell the government, hey, instead of uh, you know, $600,000 of healthcare costs in the future, um, let's approach this problem now 
and let's uh, you know fix it now and let's diagnose it and let's start you know <laughs> yeah. doing something about it. Yeah, the government really wants to know that. Insurance companies they want to know that as well because you know they're insuring people for you know health and, and life and they want to know this as quickly as possible. So those are potential partners that we also are looking at working with. Yeah. So when it comes to diagnosing someone with Alzheimer's, is it just that simple test where you follow the dot up and down? Mm -hmm. I mean, or is there something more to it that you guys are working on? So actually, yeah, just doing like a very simple uh, saccades test or, you know, just jumping pursuit test and, you know, these very basic tests where you're just watching a dot on uh, like a wall or something. It's totally possible you get the data that you need from that, but it's super boring. And uh, also seniors, they don't really like doing boring things like that if they can help it. And um, yeah, it, it's, uh, it's also difficult to get their attention and focus um, for the amount of time that's required and the amount of data that's required to actually use this as, as uh, something to generate a signal. Um, you know, you come into the, let's imagine once a month, which is already quite a big burden, right, every month. Uh, let's say you go to a local ho hospital that has uh, you know, these devices set up for eye tracking and then you go and you do the, you know, the test about 20 minutes or so and then, oh, you're healthy, you're fine, okay, come back next month, see you again, right? Every month coming back and forth, uh, you know, it's, not, it's not something that they, they wanna do so that's why they don't do it right now, uh, right? Uh, what we want to do is because, as I said previously, we finally have the technology to do all of this at a lower price point and with um, uh, you know, more accessible sensors. Uh, we want to integrate this um, you know, tracking and this, this uh, signal creation AI with the stuff that the seniors already want to do. And what do seniors want to do? They want to experience different types of, of entertainment. Sometimes they want to you know, just uh, play games or whatnot uh, with, 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 with friends and with other people in their local communities. Um, so we're looking at uh, the Microsoft HoloLens 2 device right now as, as the first device that we're trying to actually build a, like a, a launch product on top of. Uh, again, you know, our company, we're just focused on the, the algorithms and the, uh, the AI software that is used for converting the raw data into a signal. But in order to actually have a working product, you need to have uh, you know, a comb combination of, of the hardware, of, of entertainment or content that the seniors actually want to engage in, you know, especially interactive content. And then of course, the actual stuff that we're doing, which is the, the processing of the data. So our kind of goal or our, our vision of, of what we want to happen is um, a senior goes to a senior center or a community center or something similar to this. Uh, and in Korea, actually, they go quite often because it's, it's kind of like a, just a place to, to know what's going on in the local community and to, you know, maybe just uh, touch base with friends and this sort of thing. So they'll go there, you know, once a week or more or less often, right? We want them to go in there and then we have this Microsoft, you know, HoloLens headset just sitting there. Uh, they, they can put it on and then maybe they just try out uh, some kind of immersive experience or, or whatnot. Maybe, you know, there's like a catch the fish mm. sort of thing, you know, and they can walk around and maybe we have like two or three of them, you know, doing it together, kind of like a game and, mm. and uh, you know, something that is uh, approachable to them and that they actually want to do, you know. Uh, you know, bingo and these sorts of things. I know in Canada, bingo is a big thing for, for seniors, but uh, basically we want to give them uh, an experience or an interactive uh, you know, game experience or, or some other experience that they want to do. But at the same time, we're getting really important data to help protect their, their health. So instead of you know, going into the doctor's office and doing these you know, red dot tests and whatnot, uh, we're just getting the data you know, passively while they are already, you know, getting some enjoyment and some value out of it. Yeah. That's something like a nice way to kind of make the community center a little more fun and maybe interactive as well. Great. Well, let's bring it back full circle here. Come back to Pangyo a little mm -hmm. bit. Can you tell us about your experiences here in Pangyo? What have been some of the advantages of being here? Yeah. So, I mean, of course, uh, as a startup, you can get office space, you know, anywhere. Uh, office space is, is you know, uh, the baseline is just, you know, a room where you got all your people sit down and do your work, right? Uh, but one of the biggest reasons why we are here in Pangyo is because of, uh, I guess, two things. Number one is uh, the opportunity for networking with like-minded startups and also with a lot of important uh, players in, in the startup ecosystem. 
Uh, and then number two is uh, being having access to also the investment community. Uh, you know, it's kind of like um, there's Pangyo and then there's also South Side, you know, Gangnam mm -hmm. around the, the Solong area. But these are kind of two major powerhouse areas for uh, where all of the startups are and where all of the you know investment interest is and, mm -hmm. and whatnot. So and there's also a big advantage to being in Pangyo in terms of um, just uh, the, the facilities here. Right. So, yeah, I mean, this network uh, advantage and, and being where everyone else is, you know, you can't, you can't really help it. Right. <laughs> yeah. So, well, thank you so much for taking some time out of your day to talk with us. That's uh, Leland, Vice President of Go Cuba. Thanks. Cool. Well done. Yeah.